We're here in the top four of the Demon Rush Championship Series. This is the second to final match. Brandon, the Holy King, representing the OGs of Demon Rush, fighting against Joey Bellafiore, a Yu-Gi-Oh! champion. There is still time to get Demon Rush cards at shop.demonrush.com. Buy yourself a booster box and get a free champion card to get started. Without further ado, let's get into this top four feature match, which without a doubt will be the highest level of gameplay. I'm super excited for this. This is the last evil deck in the tournament. How will it do against Brandon's Holy Grail deck? Let's find out. Both players <laughs> laughing up a storm here. Loser guaranteed $500. Winner will go on to compete in the grand finals for $5,000 cash. Second place getting $3,000. And Joey won the dice roll. And will use his mulligan right away. So he said that his hand was two Exodus, two Contradict Apple. And I know from experience, if you ever open with a nice looking hand but no soldier, mulligan. Because there's a good chance you will just go five turns in a row drawing spells and you will auto lose. So smart mulligan from Joey to start the round. It does hurt to use the mulligan turn one or, or match game one but you gotta do what you gotta do joey is an exceptional player won a Yu-Gi-Oh tournament with two thousand people he is a Yu-Gi-Oh champion so this game demon rush very easy to learn if you're a Yu-Gi-Oh player it's very similar in a lot of respects and joey will start off with citadel pass so that gives brandon a lot of room to breathe no archog or Pasley. Gets the ancient coin. Would have been nice if he went first. He could really explode here. And Brandon will go for the wolves. A little bit more dangerous to play wolves against evil because they run malicious ghost and bone mac. And especially with Ghost, if he if a malicious ghost is feeding off your wolves, it can be game over real quick. It can also give the evil player opportunity to turn the game around if they're losing. But <clears throat> Brandon gets to thin his deck quite a bit. Draw. He's got a massive hand and seven cards. He can pretty much do whatever he wants right now. So Brandon will attack and take first blood, doing one damage. <laughs> and it looks like I saw Brandon had an Exodus in his hand. Probably has a ton of defense, so he's just gonna pass with six Imperium, seven cards, and keep all that juice online so he can shut down whatever Joey tries. And there comes an Urzen. Sorry about the glare. Um, <clears throat> we were sitting right under a light, and there was really nothing to do about it, so I'm going to try and overlay the cards on top here. It's a lot of editing, but at least you can see. Brandon's going to draw to eight cards in hand. Still 30 health. And Church from Brandon. Joey Chains. Brandon Contradicts. And unfortunately, that exhausted all of Brandon's Imperium. So he can't really do much more. He could have played a wolf for one and got over the Urzen, actually. I'm surprised he didn't do that. He Actually, that I'm, I'm very surprised Brandon didn't do that. I mean, because if you kill the Urzen, that, Joey loses potentially two cards he would have drawn. So I'm not sure what Brandon has in his hand, but that that's questionable to me. I would try Citadel and Skelton. <laughs> so Joe uses Citadel and Skeleton, he'll draw a card and then undoubtedly here he comes, bring back the Skeleton, try and draw two cards off the Urzen. But I feel like Brandon has something because I'm really surprised he didn't play Wolf for one and just team attack over the Urzen. Mm -hmm. 
And Joey opts not to activate the Urzan and draw. So one thing that I've seen Joey do in this tournament, chains into Contradict again. Two chains used on that church and two Contradicts used to protect it from Brandon. And here comes the attack, so undoubtedly he'll... Yeah, he activates the Urzan, the draw. And Brandon will body it, and Joey just reading that perfectly, just... Chains Apple on Urzan, and Brandon will spend three to Exodus. So he shuts down Joey from drawing four cards. That's pretty big, but... Joey has the Citadel and Skeleton combo, and he doesn't need to draw four necessarily right now. He has a hand, and he's going to draw an extra one every single turn. So as much as that trade hurt him, and I think it was a smart move from Brandon to Exodus there, but he'll be okay. <laughs> he has the Citadel, meaning he will be okay. I will swing in with Urzan and Rush, and then buff the Rush. But you can see how these players are reserving their cards for the big trade. They're not even, even Joey wasn't even sacrificing Urzan until he got into a trade situation. So that's very important to note from anybody watching, especially evil players, how Joey is playing. It's very interesting to see how he plays so backwards with his evil. He does not Apple or use Urzan on his own turn, it appears, unless he's very desperate. And he waits until his opponent's turn to use his draw power so that if they use some sort of defense to shut it down, they lose their turn. And here comes the Citadel for Skeleton. He'll continue to do, to do that all game. Brandon desperately needs to get rid of that Citadel and quick or this game will spiral out of control very fast. It looks like it's already happening. And Joey has Candle. And Body Obstruction in his hand. So the Jacob was Exodus. Brandon does still have his Wolves. He could play one, search Soren, discard the Wolf, res both. There he goes. Wow. I just looked. You didn't have a spear wolf from grave, did you? Oh, you did have a spear wolf from grave. So, Joey correctly knows that if he uses anything to stop that spirit wolf, like a body obstruction, Brandon can respond with spirit wolf's secondary effect to resurrect from the cemetery. That would resolve first. The wolf would come out. The original wolf would die, and then the second wolf that he just resurrected would search for the third wolf. So. Just smart uh, under understanding of game mechanics by Joey, not wasting his body obstruct. We did see some players uh, making that mistake in this tournament, and it cost them. Brandon does resurrect, and then uses Soren. Will he discard the wolf or a coin? Yep. Looks like Brandon has a body obstruct in his hand as well for that Urzen if Joey tries to draw. Team attacks into the live Urzen and Joey tries to chain. And Brandon says, go ahead and draw. I'm going to save my body obstruct for C. Pasley. Uh, or Kalsu. On uh, resolution, I will use theirs into Panache Eating Form. I will use my 13, 15 directly. I'll change the church. A third chains and a third contradict. What am I witnessing here? We just saw three chains used on a single church by like turn four and Brandon contradicted all three chains of destruction to keep that church alive. I can't believe that. And Brandon still has his body obstruct online. Unfortunately that Jacob is Exodus, but Joey 
will get to draw another card from that Skeleton Warrior this turn. And here comes the Arcog, finally. Took him a while to draw one, but he got it. Gets rid of the Exodus Jacob. And Arcog is strong enough to block all the damage on Brandon's board right now. With his effect and just being at five. And that Citadel, oh my goodness, that's putting in work. I kind of feel like Brandon should have let the church die and contradicted the Citadel because... I don't know, it's like, church is very powerful, turns your deck Super Saiyan, but... If they get Citadel tur Skeleton turn one, it's like over. I mean, they just draw too much. You can't keep up with it even in Holy. And you know, while Soren Ancient Coin is guaranteed, like the Chir the Citadel Skeleton, it's not guaranteed, but when it's running, it is ridiculous amounts of free draw power every turn. It's basically getting a free Soren Ancient Coin every single turn for zero. And you gotta get rid of that thing. There, he, Brandon uses Lightning Blast to try and get rid of it, and that finally goes through, so... Uh, yeah, but Joey did get to draw three or four cards from that Citadel. Uh, is that Lightning Blast too late? That's the question. Brandon uses Sleep on an Arcog after he attacked, so Joey cannot respond with the second Arcog, and Joey will respond with Apple which will cause a replay and allow him to draw two cards, basically forcing Brandon to waste his sleeping potion. Joey loses the Arcog, but he does replace it with a new card to draw. And that means that Brandon lost that trade pretty bad. Lost the sleeping potion and Joey still has Arcog that with an effect, and that's a big threat. And now Ravana comes out to wipe out the rest of Brandon's board. Now he can activate effect and pop the last one, and that Brandon's gonna be in trouble. He has, only has one card in hand. This game got wildly out of control for him very fast. <laughs> so instead of using Ravana's effect, he went for Karner. He just attacked with Rush and Karner for four damage, just enough to kill Wolf. <laughs> Brandon uses Soren, discards Forgotten Coin, which allows him to get Jacob back. But that's not too helpful for him right now because it's probably going to get shut down. He can't attack over anything. And Ravana is there, which is a huge threat. If he uses the Jacob, Ravana will pop him, pop Jacob and he won't get his effect. So the attack is blocked by Arcog. Brandon says, okay. What can he do with only two cards? Uses Jacob, responds with Ravana, and Brandon has the body for Ravana, so he will get his Jacob effect. Nice play by Brandon there. But will that help? Oh, Godfrey, can he get it off? He has the forgotten coin. He's got a bunch of wolves in Cemetery. This could be huge for Brandon. He gets rid of Karner, he's going to activate, discarding Forgotten, will it go off? And it's good! Brandon will go up to 12 Imperium and get his Wolves back. That's huge for him, that means he can get over Arcog. Wow, Joey saved the body, he let both Jacob and Godfrey go through. And held the body, that's unbelievable. I can't believe he didn't body Godfrey. He wanted to force Brandon to use the forgotten coin and rally the threat so the threat could be bodied. I cannot believe that just happened. And also Brandon forgot to team attack with his Godfrey and Wolf. He could have killed the Arcog. 
And instead, he used the Spirit Wolf effect. Oh, that's so unfortunate for Brandon. He's trying to draw an out here to this board. He Soren's discards Divine. That's horrible. That's not a good target to discard. I think Brandon made two massive misplays in this game. I mean, I'm amazed that Joey kept the body obstruction that long. I mean, that was beautiful. But at the same time, Brandon is forgetting to attack. In Brandon's defense, he doesn't, if the Godfrey goes off, you don't think your opponent has any defense left. Because if they have any defense, they're going to use it to stop Godfrey. And Joey let it go so that he could body the wolves. I just, that was such a crazy play. And because he baited Brandon into, into thinking he has no defense, there's Kalsu! But it gets slept. But I don't think it matters. That's probably enough damage for game. Man, Joey is really, really good at this game. I mean, the way he has played is, I think, just confusing the hell out of Brandon. He's passing, he's doing weenie beatdown, he's saving his draw power for Brandon's turn, and it's just... That did not feel good for Brandon. He takes a lean back in his chair and he tries to figure out what the hell just went wrong here. This did not feel right at all. They're gonna side and they're gonna get into game two here, but I think that game could have went very differently if for one, Brandon killed the Urzen with Wolf Soren because he had the church out, he could have done that. And then also he could have killed the Arcog with Godfrey Wolf before he tried to res Wolf. And even if the wolf gets bodied there, at least you get rid of Arcog and just... I don't know how much it would have mattered. I mean, he also could have contradicted the Citadel way earlier and let his church die. But these sorts of things we talk about a lot on the Demon Rush Discord, which you should join if you're a player or you want to play. There's a lot of theory crafting that goes into this game. And to be honest, it's a good question. Is it more powerful to keep your own church up or destroy their Citadel? I would personally destroy the Citadel. Because as much as I love church, and it probably is the best structure in the game, I can't let my opponent get Citadel turn one and start drawing ten cards to my five. It's just, I will lose, even with church. But, you know, in, in these players' defenses, they don't know what each one has in their opponent's hand. There's a lot of pressure. This is top four. They're surrounded by people watching them. It's hard to play perfect here. So Brandon will sleep Malicious Ghost on his wolf. And then Karner will come out. I'll attempt Cemetery Hunter and rush over the wolf and buff front. I'll pass it. And he brings out Cemetery Hunter, he gets rid of the wolf. It's not too big of a deal. Game is pretty much a stalemate at the moment. Brand will just keep bringing out these wolves and searching, thinning his deck, getting the draw power. He's got to get rid of that ghost, but he has to be careful that he doesn't run into a sleeping potion. So if he, for example, played three wolves and attacked uh, three wolves and Soren into Malicious Ghost for seven, if Joey slept one of the wolves, then Brandon's team attack power would now be five, and Joey could pump his ghost to six. Both wolves would crash into it, and Joey would draw two cards from that trade. So Brandon will do it anyway. Team attack for seven into ghost, and it's good. No sleeping potion. So Brandon conserving his hand here. Losing the ghost, not a big deal to Joey because he got a sleeping potion out of it, so it's still one one for one trade. It's not really a big deal to him. And the Urzen draw power comes in. Gonna get rid of two wolves here. And then Willie Sack, we whip for Brandon's turn again. 
He really likes to do that, and honestly, it's working out very well for him. Just watching these these matches, like Joey plays evil very like untraditionally, I would say. It's very tempting. You open with a cemetery hunter and an apple. You you want to play the cemetery hunter and apple right away, but it will get shut down by Exodus or Divine or something. So Joey's like, I always save my draw power for their turn. So if they do use the Exodus, now they're down three Imperium on their turn, and they can't make that big play they wanted to play. And it's it's just working so well for him this tournament. Double Arcog coming out. I mean, what can Brandon do? All right. So he discards Forgotten Coin, gets a Wolf. I think he still has a Wolf in his hand, but a lot of times with Forgotten Coin, if you run three of them. I think Brandon might run too, but it can brick, and if you get any target with it early game, it's good. Because sometimes you just you need something to discard, and even if you don't have any good target for Forgotten Coin in your cemetery, like that, it's still the best target to discard. And hopefully, you just get anything back. You can always just soar in the wolf away next turn. So he's gonna kill Skeleton and pass with six Imperium. Another Arcog comes out. And instead of using Karner to thin his deck, he's gonna go for damage. It's really interesting to watch Joey play. So, like, again, personally, I would probably go for the Karner effect there just to thin my deck and as much as possible wall Karner is up there, but he goes for damage, and we have a huge trade here. Oh, my God. Lightning Blast into Church. Contradict, contradict, contradict. Chainers in the replenish and Brandon wins a massive trade there, but he's facing a lot of pressure right now. I think Brandon may be over committing on these churches. I mean, we saw him go like church contradict, pass, make a lot of moves here where he's trying to defend church and he burns his whole turn to defend the church. Oh, and Adriel comes out. Will it go off? If this goes through... Oh, it gets Exodus. That's unfortunate. Brandon will pass with the big Adriel butt on his board, but Joey does have enough damage to get through. Tries to incorrectly try to Cosmic Energy Adriel, and it does not work because Greater Beings are not affected by cosmic energy, it says on the card. This card destroys one soldier on the battlefield, but except a greater being. So Joey makes a little mistake there, reveals one of the cards in his hand. But he does have 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. He's got 18 damage on board. He said sleeping scary, so he's worried about if he attacks with everything and Arcog gets slept, he will lose his whole board. So instead of risking that, he's just going to straight up pass. Oh, Brandon Devines Adriel for free. Play, play him again. Please play him again, bro. Ah, oh, it's so unfortunate. And Brandon sleeps his Adriel so that Body Obstruct will fizzle. Damn. These guys are going at it. What a game. This is easily one of our better matches we've had in this tournament. Brandon making moves. I mean, if that Adriel went off, it's over. But Joey, very intelligent with the way that he plays his hand. Always has defense. He's very comfortable having a board of weenies and not really committing anything ever, unless it's like a one-for-one -one trade. And he's going to use the Karner to bring out back.
Bad Bat. Bad Bat made it into the top four, ladies and gentlemen. Don't sleep on Bad Bat. He uses the Bad Bat to reduce Adriel down to 12 strength. Yeah, Adriel drops from 15 to 12. And what can Brandon do? He's got three Imperium. Could have an Exodus. Divine. I think he used two sleeping so far. And so Joey's probably a little bit more comfortable attacking with everything now that Brandon used a sleeping to save his Adriel last turn from the body. He said sleeping cooks. And he figures there's no way that Brandon could have the third one. So he's trying to configure the math so you can have exactly one extra point of damage. Get the optimal damage numbers on the board here. I'll do all these. So that's three plus ten is thirteen. Tax for thirteen. And he has it! He plays the third uh, sleeping potion, and Joey just cringes. He's like, unbelievable. Oh my goodness, Joey's going to lose his whole board. Brandon actually lined that up perfectly. What a deceptive play. He Oh, but Joey has a candle to keep his Arcog alive, and so Brandon is now still facing double Arcog. <laughs> but that will not cause a replay. And so Joey can't attack over the Adriel, and now Brandon has a great opportunity here to turn this game around. Joey's down to two cards. Brandon with 11 Imperium and Adriel Church on the field. This is his turn right now, right here, to make his move. He needs to do something big and apply a lot of pressure. Oh, he divides his Adriel for free. Play him again. Please play him again. But he goes for Zadkiel. Why didn't he just play Adriel again? There's two Ar there's two Arcogs. I'm re wait. I'm confused why he did that. Because now Joe uses the Arcog that was just destroyed by Zadkiel to protect his Karner, but why show the Zagkiel when your opponent knows you have Adriel? Because now Joey knows that one of those three cards in your hand is an Adriel, and I also have to prepare myself for that Adriel to be dropped. So I think the better play here is just play the Adriel again, and then you get to mask that extra card in your hand, and also you get to wipe out two Arcogs instead of one. Joey just keeps filling his board with weenies and passing. And does he, he might have the defense for Adriel now. Will Brandon risk it? And he's got the Imperium to drop it and still have two Imperium, so. But he goes for Tower instead. Yeah, he goes for Karner because we've seen that Joey runs a lot of weenie soldiers and he's just been abusing those Karners to thin his deck and fill up his board. It's just so hard for Holy to even do any damage to him because he has so many weenies on board, like at all times. This game is so intense. Could go either way. Let's see, Joey has Cipasli, Double Body, and Cosmic. And Cipasli, unfortunately, can't get over Zagkiel, so... Ooh, the Judd is pretty big here. Can protect any card on Brandon's board that he wants. And next turn, he could drop Adriel, and if it gets bodied, he could sacrifice Judd to negate the body and let Adriel go through and swing for game, so... It's a pretty awesome board here for Brandon. I, I don't know how Joey can get through this. This game was 
<clears throat> hugely in Joey's favor the entire game until he crashed everything into Brandon's third sleeping potion. Just did not think Brandon could have all three, and he did. And Brandon set it up perfectly. What a comeback. Unbelievable from Brandon. And I don't think Joey has really done anything wrong here. I mean, it seems like he has played perfectly. We did see some misplays in game one from Brandon. At least I think there were misplays. I guess it's a little subjective, but I don't know his full hand and what exactly he was thinking. But it's a lot easier to say someone misplayed when you're watching from above like this. Joey draws Malicious Ghost. That's not the card he needs. He still doesn't have an out to Zagiel. So if he plays C Pasley Ghost, he will have 14 damage. That actually is enough, but Brandon will just shut it down with all the defense in his hands. So he's going to play the Malicious Ghost as just a wall of defense. But the crazy thing is Sorn is at four strength because of Church and Babel. So Sorn is just cracking heads over there, taking out soldiers by himself. Zagiel just hit direct for a big chunk of damage. And this is Joey's last turn, basically, to do something. But all of his Chains of Destruction or was that last game. Yeah, he should still have Chains of Destruction. Maybe he sided him out. What, how can he get rid of Zachiel? And he knows that Brandon has an Adriel in his hand just waiting to come drop the thunder if he makes any kind of move. Oh, okay, there is the chains. Brandon? Well, that's interesting. He he exodus his, his own Zachiel to dodge the chains, but now his life points are open. Uh, it doesn't seem like Joey attacked with the C Pasley he just played. I believe that's C Pasley there. Oh, it was Skeleton, never mind. Joey takes another huge hit to the face. I think he must have Arcog the last one. What's the first best? Or that would have been game. Now Brandon brings out Jacob. If Jacob starts getting defense, it's over. It's just of time for sure, right? Brandon has the defense anyway. He's got body in his hand. So he does go for the defense, but he gets shut down. That skeleton is not going to protect Joey, though, because... Ooh, that's brutal. That might be game. I mean, Joey has, what, two, three cards left? Brings out C Pass, like he gets bodied again. Yeah, that is absolutely over. Brandon, unbelievable turnaround. Oh my goodness. I have I don't know if I've ever seen a game turn around that hard. It looked like it was so over for Brandon. What a recovery to win that game. And after some quick siding, we're gonna get into game three here. Ladies and gentlemen, what a match. The Battle of Titans. Evil versus Holy, down to the wire. This really is a skill game here. Whichever of these players can play the best is gonna win. Both of their decks extremely powerful. Brandon's more powerful. Joey didn't even have all the cards. And it's surprising he made it this far. He only has two Urzans, zero sleeping potions in his deck. How in the hell so I'm looking at the deck list right now. Joey is playing this tournament with zero sleeping potions, two Urzan, two C Pasley. He doesn't even have the full deck, and he is crushing it. This guy is a threat for sure. Brandon better play perfectly here if he wants to win this match. And that's going to be painful for Brandon. Discards Forgotten Coin on his opening Soren. And no targets for it. But he could use Jacob to get the coin back. First he tries to kill Karner. Four versus potentially three. And that will go through. And Joey can't really exit us because... Uh, 
Wait, Brandon didn't activate the Jacob? That's very surprising. I mean, if he gets the Forgotten Coin, he can just allow Jacob to die, and then Soren, Forgotten Coin, get the Jacob back next turn, so why, why not just use it? I mean, I guess... Okay, Chains comes out at the end phase, so that's a great opportunity for Brandon to use it now. That's a very good opportunity for him to use the Jacob and get the Forgotten Coin. He's getting a plus one here. But why? But, I mean, but why? Just let the Jacob... Just chain the Jacob. <clears throat> get the Forgotten and let him die. So Brandon has five Imperium. I see now he has Exodus, Contradict, and Body. So he wants the full hand of defense, but I think you just take the plus there. So Brandon will use the Exodus and Arcog. If, it, if Joey contradicts, he's got a, another Contradict. Oh, Brandon has two Contradicts in his hand. So I don't know what Brandon is thinking here. I guess he just really didn't want to be forced to contradict and go to zero, but brings out Judd. So Joe uses Exodus, and we get a contradict, contradict. Joey is just four defense cards in his cemetery. No draw power yet, though. So, Brandon shouldn't be too nervous. The, the issue is that the draw power is coming at some point. As soon as Joey draws an apple or an Urzen, he's going to start drawing the rest of them. And Brandon's sitting there with Zagkiel, Body, Jacob in his hand. That Zagkiel would never go through, I don't think. And he's about to lose his Judd. There's the ghost. So Joey smartly crashes a cemetery hunter. Wants that extra Imperium. He's worried about sleeping potion. Greggly. So he's gonna put a little bit more damage on the board here so that he will be unaffected by sleeping. And now he can team attack with everything and he doesn't have to worry about sleeping potion because even if one gets slept, he'll still have nine strength. Oh wow, he goes portal and uses it and it's good. But now Urzen's gonna let him, if he bodies the ghost, he'll just use Urzen and draw two anyway. And Brandon will take another minus. He has Zakiel, Body, Jacob. So he had to let that go through. And he could have bodied the ghost, but it's a horrible idea. I don't blame him for. He did the smart move, actually. Ooh, that better go through. Oh no, Brandon, what are you doing? Brandon, you have to kill the ghost. You can't you don't kill the Exodus Arcog. You're just gonna reactivate him now. You gotta kill the ghost. Of course that's fine, because now Joey has a free Arcog alive in his cemetery to use. You gotta kill the ghost, Brandon. Now you're at zero, you can't defend Zagkiel. Like all he has to do is play one soldier, run over Zagkiel and start drawing. And now you can't kill the ghost because he's got an Arcog in the cemetery. You can't kill the Exodus Arcog as your first target. And what did he play? Bone Mac? Looks like Bone Mac came out. He's going to draw and Vanquish and Bad Bat. 
Uh, these two in and buff, so hit you for a four. I mean, it's like we did 18. Uh, Urzen effect, target. And Joey's gonna use Urzen on Bad Bat after putting on a little bit more damage. Now he's gonna replenish. Brandon's health points getting dangerously low. And Joey wouldn't have got that draw if he would have attacked the ghost instead of the Arcog. Oh no, now another Arcog. This is brutal. Uh, he's got Jacob, Tower, Body. The Babel is not going to help him. And you should soar him before you Babel. So you don't, you'll know if you want to play that Babel or not. Because if you have draw power in your hand, you always use the draw power first, typically, and then reevaluate your hand and your options. If you play Tower and then you soar in prayer beads and draw a better option, you're gonna be like, oh crap! I wish I never played Tower. So he plays Jacob, and now Joey's gonna draw another card off that ghost that Brandon should have killed. And he's got an Arcog live, five, six cards in hand. I feel like. Jacob's at five. That was actually incorrect. That was a five versus five. I mean, Joey would have just pumped, but uh, Brandon needs to be like, okay, nothing happens. Oh, man. Brandon should have clarified that he was using Rush Effect because they were equal strength. This is so brutal for Brandon. He is just in a horrible position. Even if he A drills, if he, I mean, if Joey has any defense, it's just over. Now he draws Pristine Coffin. He could use that. Pop ghosts and Arcog. So it goes through, but he's only at two, and he has no church. He can't play Godfrey. He just has to pass, I guess, with body life. But he is incredibly low on health, and that might be game. Well, he has a divine in his hand, but that won't help because it will cause a replay. He's just going to play it again, attack for game. I was at 11, right? That was my first man I started at 7. Wow, unbelievable match from Joey versus Brandon. I mean, Joey just played immaculately. I'm so impressed with his gameplay. Brandon there. I feel like he must have, he made a couple monster misplays and I that may have cost him this round and also I don't know if he sided properly. That means our finals is Holy versus Evil, Joey versus Stephen Gray. That is coming up soon. A massive Holy versus Evil grand finals coming up here. What a match. We'll see you guys soon for the grand finals.